Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to a little introduction to my next Udemy course. Now, some of you might not know this, but alongside the YouTube videos that I upload here on YouTube for free, I also have more structured courses that I upload to Udemy and I charge for those. That's basically where my revenue comes from that allows me to continue making the free videos on YouTube. So I've been working on a new course for the last little while and I've been working with uh, a good buddy of mine and pixel artist, his name's Toby. And I've been working on a new RPG course, a role playing game for Udemy. Now, my RPG series on YouTube that's free here is an action RPG. So as you play the game, you attack things in real time and they attack back in real time. But many people have been requesting a turn-based RPG, so that's what I'm going to show you right now. So this Udemy course, I've been, it's going to be an intermediate course, meaning you'll need to have at least some experience with GameMaker before you take the course. Uh, if you've messed around with my YouTube videos here or have taken any of my other courses, then you'll probably be able to take the course. It's not an advanced course, but I do assume that you, you've used GameMaker before and you've done some basic programming inside of GameMaker before. And if you're not to that point, you can get there. So you can see it's got some really nice graphics and I've uh, and th that's thanks to Toby. He's been doing some great work on these graphics and we've got some movement and I've also got trans uh, transitions between the rooms. So you can see I go in the house, I've got a little fade transition come out, it fades back out again. And we've got some different items in here. We can explore this area. We've got our blacksmith here. His name's Adam. So this will be a turn-based uh, story driven RPG so there will be a story element Adam is a big part of that story he's one of the characters that you'll learn to uh, get to know and I've also got a battle system so let's go outside of the town right here and show you some of the battle system you can see the tile sets here that Toby's done a great job and the nice thing is these tile sets are really easy some of these are still a little bit of a work in progress like this water right here uh, I actually did the water so he's gonna be redoing that a little bit improving it just a tad But you can see we can come into here in this area we can actually run into an enemy and currently there are only two options uh, you can either attack or run so let's do an attack real quick we'll select an attack and it damages the enemy and let's finish killing this enemy off and we leave the battle so I'll show you how to do a transition like this with a nice parallax background and the animations uh, these characters will be animated they're not animated yet I'm still Toby still working on that so now you can see here I actually leveled up during the last battle so after killing the second enemy my character has leveled up there's not really a lot of UI for that yet but the programming behind that is already done so now when I damage this enemy I deal quite a bit more and when it attacks me it deals quite a bit less than it did before and we can also test the run there will be a real-time element to the battle, so if you attack an enemy and you press a button at the right time during the attack, you'll get your critical. Um, if they're attacking you and you press a button at the right time during their attack, you can block it. And there will even be a counter mechanic, so if you can get the timings for the different enemies down, uh, there will be that real-time element to it. It will be simple, but there will be a real-time element to it. So let me show you some of how I did this because I talked about maybe showing some of the code in this video and I'd like to show you guys uh, a few little things. So the first thing I want to show you is how I set up the movement between the different rooms. So let's look at, let's look at the town. The town is one of the most complicated areas when it comes to the movement between rooms and this is because when you uh, start adding a lot of different entrances and exits to an area, then you have to keep track of all those different entrances and exits. So the system that I've set up uses two objects. I've got a door object and what's called a start position object. 
So the door object right here has a creation code called next room. So when the player collides with that door object, it sets it goes to that next room, right? And so the next room for this door object is West Meadow, which makes sense. That's this room, which is what it connects to. And if we come to the West Meadow here and we right click on this door object, you can see the creation code is town because when we go through there, it sets us to the town. But here's the tricky part. Uh, our player object is persistent. So when we hit this door and we go to the next, when we hit the door right here and we go to the next room, we'll actually be clear over here, our player object will. So we need a start position object, which is this one, which tells our player where to start in this room. Now the code for that is pretty simple. Uh, first of all, the start position object here has a creation code called last room. So it keeps track of what room we should have come from. So if we're starting in this position, we know that the last room we came from was the town. So now let's go into our player object here and in the room start event, you can see here that we have we cycle, uh, first of all, we check to see if there is a start position object in the room. If there is, um, we do a with statement on the start position, which cycles through all of the start positions. So it goes through every single start position object in the room. It cycles through all of them. And it compares our last room, because the player keeps track of the last room it was in, with the start position's last room. So if the last room that we came from matches up with the last room of the start position, then we move to the start position's location. So it's a really simple system. Once you have this little teeny bit of code, uh, this one right here, once you have this little teeny bit of code right here set up, then all you need to do is add in your doors and your start positions and set their creation code to the corresponding uh, towns that they need to go to. So it's a really simple system and really cool. The other thing I wanted to show you is how the tiles work because uh, this Udemy course is all about trying to keep things as simple as possible so that you can scale it. So let's look at the tile sets. If we come into uh, backgrounds right here and meadow and forest, we have this base tile set right here which just loops. So this is the background in our room. Then we have a tile set called dirt right here. And you can see this tile set has some uh, transparent sections to it and it looks kind of bad right here, right? But let me show you how this works and why it looks so cool in game. So if we come into our west meadow right here, you can see that with a very simple tile set we're allowed or we're able to create a pretty good looking uh, road here with some grass and the reason is because of those transparent areas so you can see these right here this is actually the background coming through showing through and our tile set for the dirt is really quite simple if we come into tiles and we go to the dirt tile set you can see it's really easy to add in a new little pathway that's going to look really good and that's because of the transparent sections of that tile set and it just goes over the background tile so I set it up to try and be really quick and really easy to add in tiles or new tile sets if you were going to do some of your own the last thing I want to show you before I stop this video and give you a little more information about this Udemy course is I'd like to show you the transitions. So I'll just show you the transition between different between the doors right here, not the battle transition. So if we come into miscellaneous here, oh, and another cool thing is in the forest right here, all you have to do is put this object inside of the room and it's invisible and it, it sets random encounters to true for that room. So if you want random encounters set to true. Uh, but let's look at the fade transition here. This is an object when you want to call this transition. All you do is create the transition and then set its next room so that it knows which room to go to and then it just fades in right here or fades fades dark moves to the next room and then fades out and so we get a really cool 
we get a really cool transition with not very much code. And uh, we also set the player's state to a wait state, so that prevents the player from moving at all during the transition period, and uh, which gives us this nice, cool little fade, fade in, fade out. I actually allow the player to move during the fade back in, in the new room, um, but that's easy to change if you don't want to do that, but I decided it would be cool. Oh, and also these tie these Gra these flowers are tiles, but they do have depth, and I'll show you guys how you can set up a really quick and easy code to add tile depth to tiles. The trees are as well. The trees are a tile. But you can see they also have depth. I can walk in front of the tree and behind the tree. Really, really easy. So, more information on this course. Uh, Udemy updated their pricing policy, so the lowest I can do a course for is $20. However, I'm going to be doing a Kickstarter for this course. Now, normally I don't really like to do Kickstarters, but here's why I've decided to do it for this course. The number, well, there's two main reasons. The first one is uh, Toby has been doing all of these great graphics and I've been paying him out of pocket just with some business savings that I have. And that's been going really well but he needs to uh, do some animations, quite a few different animations for all the enemies and stuff, and animations take a lot more time. So I need to be able to raise some funds to pay him for that because I don't have the money to pay him for all the animations, and I, I really don't have the time between all the different projects I'm doing, the pauldron and my YouTube stuff, to do all the animations myself. So paying him is going to be the best way to do that. I also have a musician that I would like to pay to do some music and sound effects for this project. So uh, the Kickstarter funds will be going directly to fund to creating the project. Uh, the other reason I thought Kickstarter would be a good idea is because if you purchase the course on Kickstarter, I can give you guys a discount more than what I'll ever be able to discount on Udemy. And so I know you guys are going to be asking about release date and pricing. So here's what I'm going to say about that. First of all, the Kickstarter, I'm looking as I'm looking towards doing the Kickstarter at the second week of July. However, I want to do a shorter Kickstarter. I don't know if I'll do the full 30 days. After that, I would like to release the course uh, in maybe early August, depending on when uh, Toby can finish up the animations and stuff, what works with his schedule. So I'd like to be able to release, start recording and release the course early August, but that, that's kind of a loose date. Uh, as far as the price goes, I'm shooting for under $20 for sure for the early backers. I'm thinking around $15 for early supporters via Kickstarter. So $15 for this course I think is a bargain. I work really hard on these courses and they take a lot of time. I could charge a lot more and it would still be worth it, but I think that I prefer to charge less if I possibly can. Uh, my revenue has slowed down quite a bit because of Udemy's pricing change and so I really need to be able to do this course and to be able to get some new revenue to keep my business going. But I think a $15 price tag will work and I think that will be extremely fair. So tell me guys what you think of this course and if you're excited about it in the comments. If you have any ideas for the course, also feel free to post them in the comments. I'm open to ideas. I can't guarantee that I'll put them all in the course. But I definitely have, I have a Trello board and I'll be adding those ideas to the Trello board and do what ones I can and what I think fits well with the project. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. This video, be sure, Spanish coming out a little there. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Be sure and like, favorite, and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later.